So this is the DevOps mock interview day 39. So we already completed 38 mock interviews. If anyone watching this video on YouTube, you can check out the uh, playlist section. You can go to DevOps interview question and answers. There you can find all mock interviews. Okay, so today's Sunil is going to participate in our mock interview. So please like this video so that uh, get uh, motivation to continue. So yeah, hi Sunil, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sir. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Sunil Shikalwadi, a software engineer with five years of experience in the industry. And my expertise spans several critical areas of a modern software development and operations. I am proficient in a version control using Git and have hands-on experience with a continuous integration through a Jenkins. And in terms of a configuration management, I utilize Ansible and also my skills uh, also included in the containerization with the Docker and Kubernetes, enabling efficient deployment and scaling of applications. And for logging, I rely on a Grafana to ensure a system performance and reliability. Additionally, I leverage infrastructure as a code, like a tools like a, a Terraform and AWS CloudFormation to automate the you know, management infrastructure. So this is all about this. Okay, so you still need to improve, so there will be some lags. Okay, I have English. Can you please introduce yourself? Hello, thank you for giving this opportunity. My name is Anisiti Venkate a DevOps engineer with five years of experience currently working at Three Tech Software Private Limited in Kondapur, Hyderabad. My skill set including extensive expertise in AWS for cloud infrastructure management, Git for version control, and well version continuous integration deployment using Jenkins along with build automation through Maven. I have experience with code quality and security tools like SonarCube and JFrog as well as configuration management using Ansible in the realm of containerization. I work with Docker and Kubernetes for orchestrating and scaling applications. My proficient in infrastructure has a code in demonstrate through my use of Terraform. Additional, I'm skilled in shell script to automate tasks and utilize Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring and visualization. My background equipment to drive efficient and reliable DevOps practices in any dynamic environment. That's it from my side. So yeah, Ansuti, you were perfect, but there is some lags in your introduction. Okay, you need to start, you are starting with a good pitch, but uh, slowly it was reducing and uh, so I, I can understand it's a long, long introduction. Yeah, but if you practice more, right, definitely you will get into uh, to the mark. Same applies for Sunil as well. Okay. So, so you just practice okay. a lot okay. so that uh, it will improve. Suddenly, um, I know suddenly I've asked you the introduction, but I can understand suddenly whenever if anyone asks, we will forget. But still you are performing well. You both are performing well compared to other mock interviews. Yes, yes. Because suddenly I texted and suddenly I've asked you the introduction. Okay. So still you are trying. So Abhishek, can you please introduce yourself? I have already prepared, uh, shared you the script, right? For introduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm good at it. So I am myself Abhishek, a DevOps engineer with uh, three years of hands-on experience. And I'm well versed in uh, to using tools like Terraform for infrastructure as a code and also Kubernetes for container orchestration and also use Docker for containerization. And coming to pipeline, I use Jenkins for uh, to automate the deployment process and also Git for version control. So yeah, thanks. So yeah, Abhishek, like whatever the script I provided at Venkatesh, so he has converted his, in his own terms. Okay, like that you need to convert. So whatever the script I have provided, he doesn't follow blindly. So he has done some modification accordingly, I have introduced. Okay. So okay. Yeah, you can add more like into your introduction part. It is, I know it is sweet and short. You can add some more points to your introduction. So shall we start today's mock? Sorry, our voice is breaking, sir, in between. Okay. Now? 
now still my voice is breaking is it okay hello am i audible hello okay so how do you handle persistent storage in kubernetes So mostly in stateful sets, like uh, mostly stateful sets require persistent storage, and in, in persistent storage we have two types called uh, PV and PVC. Uh, basically, PV is a piece of cluster in the storage, and PVC which requires the pod to make use of the cluster. And also we have few policies in PV and PVC which is return and delete. So basically, in return policy, when you delete the storage, I mean when you release the storage, I mean the data inside the PV is not will not be deleted. It will be retained and it will be make uh, you, and you can use it for later additional. I mean, you can use it for later purpose. Super. Yes, you are right. But in this case, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, what is the difference between this PV and PVC? Persistent volume and persistent volume claim. PV is like, PV is like hardware in your computer. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, no, no. PV is like hardware. PVC is like making making use of an hardware to add or uh, delete something uh, in your storage yeah we will create a virtual volume out using right where by using cloud provider volume we are going to create a personal volume so we will claim that personal volume using pvc so coming to difference person volume is the actual storage pvc is the claim which we are request how do you provision dynamic storage in kubernetes through ebs we can create an ebs storage and uh, through that we can provide a dynamic storage to our kubernetes clusters okay how do you configure a stateful set for stateful application so what happens uh, if a pod in the stateful set is deleted pod in the stateful set is deleted ah Oh. And for that we have uh, written, written and delete policies. So if anything, any, any of the policies actually is, is on, or uh, I mean, we have said like uh, I mean, so every pod policy, will get a unique name, right? So even the pod was deleted, it will replaced with the same name and the same pod, and they will get a same volume as well. Am I right? I need to. I mean, I forgot about that. How do you manage volume snapshot uh, snapshots in Kubernetes? So, how do you resize a persistent volume claim in Kubernetes? I guess in manifest file we can Super. able to Super. add the storage. Yes, you are right. Is. We can increase that. How do you monitor a Kubernetes cluster? Mm, through a third party applications like Prometheus and Grafana. Super. And yes. also using uh, creating replica sets, we can also uh, add. I mean, we can also define in the deployments. It no all, replica by, by set. It's, that, a, it's also, a daemon set. Not a replica. Demon, set. Yeah, sorry, demon, 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 sorry, demon, set, demon, set. Yeah, yeah. It will automatically run in the background. Okay. What is Kubernetes horizontal auto, uh, pod autoscaler? How does it work? Okay. So consider when you are uh, when you are facing sudden spike in your application, what uh, that is where the horizontal pod autoscaler comes in. Uh, basically, it, it creates uh, based on CPU utilization. It, it creates. Uh, it, I mean, you, it, it can add or it can add or uh, remove. Um, yes, you uh, are right. Yeah. We can also like uh, scale up vertically, but the best practice is scale using horizontally yes. because from vertically it, we can scale we can scale the CPU size and memories, but in, uh, horizontally we can create another pods, or instance. Yeah. Yes, and one of the advantages we can run that pod in multiple uh, nodes. Even though node node got failed, still our application will not have any downtime. How do you configure custom metrics for HPA? That is how general product scaler same. So how do you collect logs from Kubernetes pod? 
using daemon set right yes or we can use a side card container like nothing but in pod you can create one more container a multi container multi yes. container yeah so how do you monitor kubernetes nodes and pods um, same so can... mostly monitoring and relaying but i will be yeah. handling yeah. the competition grafana or also we can also use the demons okay how do you troubleshoot a failing pod in kubernetes this is one, one more important we, like what are the question i have asked that every question is repeated one but this is the damn sure question how do you troubleshoot a failing pod what steps you will follow okay how do you secure we check on uh, ports sorry how do you secure communication between ports through cluster ip cluster ip is a default ip i mean through uh, depending that we can like make port to port internal port to port communications yes how how communication will happen who is a responsible person to make the communication happen yesterday we have discussed right cube proxy cube proxy yeah what is role based access control in kubernetes basically uh, it is uh, it is uh, it is one of the key concept in enhancing the security part coming to kubernetes it is also uh, i mean similar to iam where we can uh, define uh, roles i mean where we can define roles to limit the third use of third party applications to our uh, pods we can mm. also like uh, define it under namespace and also we can also define the rules for uh, cluster level also okay first question i was asked you how do you handle persistent storage in uh, kubernetes kubernetes uses persistent volume and persistent volume claim to manage storage whatever you said you are right so real life example a database that requests persistent storage across pod restores so this is the persistent volume claim access modes storage so what is the difference between persistent volume and persistent volume claim persistent volume or physical storage well persistent volume claim or request to the storage so whatever you said you are right how do you provision dynamic storage in kubernetes dynamic provision automatically creates a storage based on pvc using a storage class using aws ebs so whatever you said you are right so how do you configure a stateful set for stateful application stateful set manages the deployment scaling for of stateful application okay for stateful application we will use stateful set okay. what happens if a pod is pod in a stateful set is deleted so deleting a pod in a stateful set which kubernetes automatically recreates that's what i said right how do you manage volume snapshots so volume snapshots allows you to create backups of persistent volumes okay you like this using kind volume snapshot you can able to create so how do you resize a persistent volume claim in kubernetes so if you say there is a storage option right you can directly edit the manifest file so using prometheus so we will monitor the kubernetes cluster what is hpa you can automatically scale and scale up and scale down how do you configure custom metrics for hpa okay so like this metric http request like this by using uh, manifest file we can edit and we can change how you will collect the logs like using elastic search or fluentd or kibana like that you can able to collect the logs how do you monitor uh, kubernetes so using kubectl top or tools like prometheus to monitor failing pod how you will troubleshoot you will kubectl describe pod and you will see or you can use kubectl logs so how do you secure communication between pods use network policies to control traffic between pods okay you can use the network policy role based access control okay you can grant the read only like this role for uh, any user or namespace level okay that's it for uh, today i will just stop the recording